Hello, my people. Atrowe Salus. Good morning, good afternoon. Depending on your location, I want to watch this video. Now, um, about um, Oshomole. Now, not saying come, come, Miss Yan, Miss Fire. He say you no know, see anything wrong for waiting and do um, the NLC president. And this man was former NLC president. You understand? So strike where they won't go is uncalled for, you know. In short, eh, I don't know why some of our leaders, when they don't join politics, they don't they chop this money, they brain all the knots for their heads, they come out, they don't they do all right. Now very few of them. Arise, they don't sit down on top this matter. I won't make a year waiting to arise people talk. You understand? So I beg, if you just come across my video, this is on NHTV. Help me like and follow this page, NHTV NG. Go my YouTube channel, NHTV Angle. Subscribe, like the channel. Turn the notification bell on to all my returning subscribers, my followers. Thank you. I appreciate you. Gratitude is my attitude. Share the video, watch the video, and um, leave your comment. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. So, Shomole, that have come out to say all sorts and sort of like berate labor and say, oh, this is not what you should be striking for and all of that. I'm sure they will eat their words today. Hmm? And for Senator Adam Sashomale, I'd like to ask him. He was a famous, respected labor leader in this country. That's he fought one. for the people. In fact, he was so popular among the young people that a rapper back in the days, that Green, released a song. And there was a line in the song that says, Mule, fight for him, you can show That's how prominent he was. I ask him today. If he had been beaten in many of his interventions on the streets in Lagos and humiliated, will he say that Labour should not take action like this? And for the rep of the president of that road, Mr. Bayan Onuga, that tried to couch it around politics, I'm sure all of them would take their words back now because the national security advisor has been able to point out that, contrary to the report released by the police, this man was actually beaten. And the likes of the China and Co that were arrested, they are police. So why lie all this while? Why take us through the rigmarole? Why even the government go to court to prevent the strike rather than arrest these people involved? So it has now shown that the strike was justified by Labour. And if Labour had not gone on that strike and the government had felt the heat, action will not be done. It's even more sad because it just indicates the kind of country we live in. The sad reality of living in Nigeria today. That anything can happen and if you don't put your foot on the ground, then nothing will be done. Everybody tried to couch it around politics. They said Joe Ajiro came to Imo to disrupt politics. In fact, some people even started making allegations that he has future plans of becoming governor in the state. And we kept on saying that's not about the matter. The matter is the fact that was Joe Ajiro beating yes. Should anybody, any citizen, even a six-year-old, has a right to be beaten like that? No. And we must fish out those people all of a sudden. From the police saying, no, we rescued him from the mob. Now we are seeing the police officers, we are arrested and as culprits in this. So I ask again, what kind of nation are we trying to build? Anyway, Labour has been able to backtrack and suspend the strike. But also, I will portion blame to Labour. Labour should now focus on fighting for the rights of the Nigerian worker and the Nigerian people. Cost of living crisis at an all-time high. K people are on their knees in this country. There's a video making the rounds of a Nigerian that has asthma complain about the increase in the price of jokes. I was moved to tears by that video. Yes. Inflation numbers came out yesterday over 27 percent. And guess what is increasing the inflation numbers? Cost of drugs, cost of medicine, cost of food. I had my time going to try to buy a pack of chicken yesterday from 6.5, it has gone to 7,500 naira. And as all of this is going on, nothing to cushion the effect. That's another justified strike by labor. And for government that quickly was saying that it would be contempt of court if labor did not listen to the industrial court, I asked them, what about their own contempt in the case of a Mephil and Namdi Kano? They are the ones that break the law constantly in this country. Consistently. And government too should be held accountable. So for all of those that try defending the government, try couching the conversation around politics for Joe Ajiro, I'm sure now that new reminders come and say they've actually arrested the culprits and some of them are police officers, then it's a big, big indictment on all of them. We can't build a country this way. All we call for is fairness. And please, I would also like to call Pick a struggle. I'm sad about the fact that a lot of people too many times 
they use the civil society space as a launch pad into politics. There must be people that will fight for the people. If you are not fighting for the people, leave the people alone. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that the likes of Mr. Shomale can say that today because actually the civil society was their launch pad into politics. But we can't have a country where everybody uses civil society as launch pad into politics with nobody fighting for the rights of Nigerian people. We need people that speak for the Nigerian people. And the civil society space is shrinking. The civil society space, people are fast turning from there into the elite political class, which is also problematic for this country. I rest my case this morning, but Labour too should also stand their guard. They should, indeed. And it is from there that I will start because I have this feeling that um, two wrongs definitely at any point in time cannot make a right. Uh, if there is a case that says Labour should not uh, strike, I think there is a need for them to follow uh, due process and to obey the law. We can't say that because the government is not obeying the rule of law, is failing to do what the court has instructed it to do, then we will also say, well, we will not obey. I even saw one of the uh, leaders, the TUC president, uh, saying that if the government is failing, then of course we too, why should we obey the, uh, the courts? So there is a need for us to say to that we will obey the rule of law, we will do the right thing at all time. That's on the one hand. But on the other hand, I am so happy with what uh, Mr. Nuru Rubadu, Malam Nuru Rubadu has done, because he has done what nobody else in this government has done to date, which is to speak truth to the people that matter. They needed to hear that truth. And that's the reason why the strike has been called off. There is a need for people who have assaulted. There's an, I've got multiple forums where I engage Nigerians in conversation and I listen to them. And what I was hearing throughout the last 24 hours has been the fact that the office of the president of Nigeria Labour Congress that represent millions of Nigerians was at attacked on that day. It is not the person of, uh, of uh, Mr. Ajero that was attacked. If Mr. Ajero had gone into Imo State and quietly went to his village, it is unlikely that he would have been attacked. But he went in there as the president of NLC. If the president of Nigeria is attacked, will the whole of Nigerian armed forces not strike in response to that? Will they say that, oh, he's just the person of the president, it is okay, there is nothing to talk about, we should not use our armed forces to defend our... The NLC has to defend its president. The integrity of the office of NLC must be respected. The office of that president must be respected. There is no point in any individual or any part of the government establishment, any part of our armed forces, taking law into his hands and then attacking any individual. Forget about even the president of NLC. I will not want to be attacked by a policeman because I'm expressing myself and I'm expressing the right to go out and to protest. It is protected by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So there is no reason for anybody to have done that. But I come back to where I started from. NLC, obey the law. If the court says no strike, then no strike. If they say no, uh, no uh, demonstration, then no demonstration. You two go back to court and get your right to protest, get the right approved by the court of law with competent jurisdiction. Let them give you that permission and then do it. Set yourself as example to the government that has failed consistently in the last six months by not obeying the rule of law, by not obeying what the court has said. In the last six months, there are not many instances where this government and the government before it, which is also APC, the government of Buhari, failed so many times to respect the rule of law, to respect the courts of Nigeria that has given proclamation and made decisions on behalf of Nigerians. They failed consistently. And this government needs to begin to change and show that what Mr. Nuri Ribadu said about the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is right, that he wants to obey the rule of law. 
Mr. Nuri Badu has led the way as part of this government. He has done the right thing. And what is required is for the government to do exactly what Mr. Nuri Badu, the NSA, has said this government wants to do. Obeying the rule of law, doing the right thing at all times, ensuring that if the court says, let it go, then you let it go. If a Mefele is asked to be allowed to go, then let him go. If Nam Dikanu is allowed, is asked by the court to be released, then release him. If there is anybody else under EFCC, ICPC, Nigeria Police, release them. Mm. Whatever it is, let them go. Yeah. And then go back to court to demand that the court will give you right to be able to do whatever you want to and, do. And, and after they've been granted bail, I must also sound a note of warning. In respect the rule of law, do not threaten these people with arrest again. Yes. Because we saw the case of Emefile. He was granted bail. And that's, you see, for us not talking about that enough is a desecration. Mm -hmm. Emefile was granted bail. The DSS forcefully rearrested him in the process between prison officers. Yes. Two, you know, reps of government. Yes. Mm. All right? And the FCC now. They were first reluctant when he was granted bail to be able to release him. Now they finally released him. I don't want to hear any attempt to rearrest Mr. Mephele since he's been granted bail. He has submitted his passport. He should come to court. But any attempt to rearrest him definitely is against the laws and the ruling of the court because he's been granted bail. Yes. Because that's one thing we see too many times. Mm -hmm. And it just looks as though. <clears throat> Our security agencies, you know, fast just want to arrest people and keep them in a gulag and all of that. No, because if we want to build a democracy that will stand the test of time, it takes a lot of temperance and tolerance. And that brings me to the issue of our dear friend and brother, uh, Shore, who's yeah. being through the same process, process over and yeah. over again. There so, is no case to answer from what they are saying. But, but if it, there is, just want then to let the, let, let, let the let case be handled. Let's let just go. it so Don't it, process it, this it, and it, take years. The rule of law should not be selective. That's yes, just it. That's it just shouldn't. it.